Hello, Wisdom and podcast peoples. My name is Stacy Brayuka. I am known as the technology therapist and squirrel wrangler. And I don't just call myself a therapist. I actually play one in real life, have for 25 plus years, as well as a uh, public health educator and geek girl. Uh, <coughs> and today is Take Time Thursday. And today's topic under that is spend time with loved ones. So the reason that I am doing um, technology therapist uh, so late today is that that's exactly what I've done today is spent some time with some loved ones that one needed a uh, ride back and forth to a uh, uh, an appointment. And another one um, just got their third COVID booster the other day, so they weren't feeling real whoopy the other day, and I just wanted to check on them. So I've been spending time with family today. And you know what? I feel so incredibly blessed to be able to do that because of how I have structured my life. And even though sometimes how I've structured my life means I have to work on Sundays or Monday nights or, um, you know, sometimes it may feel like quote, I'm working all the time, quote unquote, but I would much rather be sitting at a relative's house, spending time with them and taking a couple seconds away to answer an email while I'm at their house than to not be able to ever do those things with them. Um, you know, had I had a major issue business-wise happen while I was out and about today with family, I would have just taken care of it while I was on the run and I would have been blessed to do that. Uh, and I, it just got me thinking about that. And then I realized, of course, it was take time Thursday and I'm like, well, the topic itself for today just presented it right into my life. And, um, there are no coincidences, in my opinion, just opportunities that we do or don't choose to take. Um, and Creator dropped one one or two in my lap today, and I'm taking the opportunities, and I figured I'd bring them along in here. So, um, you know, it just spending time with family in general. Um, we've probably all looked at that in a slightly different way in the last couple of years than we did prior. Um, and it's become more important, uh, or I don't know if it's become more important or it's just moved to the forefront. Like the idea of it has moved to the forefront. I think instead of become more important, it actually just the idea of doing it has moved up the values chain a little bit more and the imperative, the thought of we need to do this and we need to focus on it. It needs to be, um, we need to take more mindful time with family members or those we love. And so when I say family members, um, I, I'm, I'm native I'm Native American and I follow many traditional ways. And some of that to me is family is not just by blood. To me, family includes, well, frankly, we're all connected. So I, you know, that could include everyone on the planet, but really it includes my biological family, my extended biological family and my non-blood extended family, that they're all important to me. Um, and maybe I should have known this this morning because I had a couple of really interesting dreams last night about a couple of my extended native family that are passed on. Um, and I'm one, I'm trying to figure out a little bit about what they were trying to tell me because I really do think they were trying to bring me a message. Um, and, you know, I think some of it is, is just make sure I took the time today with family. Uh, and whether that was or wasn't their message, I'm going to take that as part of the message and, and go with it anyway, uh, because frankly, it can't hurt. 
any time we can spend time with each other, um, even if it's going to the doctor or going, you know, going to appointments with a loved one. Um, some people would see that as a chore. I saw it as a way to spend time with them and be of service. Um, and frankly, I think my whole life is spent of service. I, I grew up in service-based youth organizations, um, exposed to service-based adult organizations my parents were involved in, parents and grandparents, really, um, and and personally have just been involved in service all of my life and couldn't see a life without that kind of thing, um, of some kind of service. I think we might all define that slightly different, but not necessarily large, you know, largely different, but being of service to be able to do something kind and loving and caring for another human being, be they biological family, extended family, non-biological extended family, even for, for people we don't know, um, what other value to walking on this planet is there, really? Um, and not just for the, oh, let's pay it forward karmically. Because, yeah, okay, I added to my karma bank today. And I know for sure that other people's actions toward me and service and caring and those things towards me, I've, I've taken out of that same karma bank. You know, I've been blessed with those who are doing things that do things in service to me as well. But I think, I guess, I guess maybe the question is, the, the best question is, is are we mindfully spending time with loved ones and people that we care about? And how mindfully were we, were we doing that prior to, say, 2019? 2020, 2019, and more importantly, how mindfully are we doing that now? And how mindfully, how can we, how can we build it in as a habitual mindful practice for our future? Um, I was not blessed with children, so I can't answer specifically the parenting side and fam on the family and parenting one. Um, but I can, from the perspective of being a non-biological aunt and actually grandma to other human beings, um, even though my husband and I, neither one have had children, uh, before we met each other, nor after we got married, we, uh, actually Nate from the native community have figured out how to have grandkids without having kids. And I'll tell you what, it's a blessing to have had those grandkids and know that they uh, called us grandma and grandpa and um, appreciate the idea that um, young ones have been impacted by us and care about us especially because we don't have children. Um, one of my, my family members that I went, you know, helped with today doesn't have children either. And so I am, you know, I'm a biological relative of this person, um, but uh, they feel like they don't have anybody who could care for them. And I'm like, I'm here, I'm right here. And I will be here for you. Um, not just because it's a family member, but, you know, do I feel an obligation because it's a family member that is related to, you know, um, you know, am, am I feeling obligated because it's a, an aunt? So a, a sister of a, of a, of a relation, uh, there's some form of obligation, I guess. I, I don't know if I could separate that out, but frankly, uh, I'm, I'm obligated because I love her. I'm, I'm obligated because I care for her, not because of necessarily just the biological position she has in my family. Um, 
it's because I care for her as a human being and, and wanted to make sure that she was cared for today. Um, so for whatever reason, you know, if somebody wants to like really get down into the weeds about it, yeah, whatever the reason, that's what I did. And I'm not saying any of this today at all to get any recognition for it because I don't care if somebody wants to recognize me for it or not, that doesn't matter. I don't want to be recognized for it. I just want to know that I was there and, you know, uh, and the, the person, you know, was, was, you know, Oh, I'm so glad you did this. Well, frankly, maybe I don't know that they realized the things in life they've done for me. And it wasn't that I was per paying it back per se, although you could say I was paying it back. Um, it was just because they needed it. They needed the help. I was available. I was able to do it. And I felt blessed to be able to do it because of the way my life, the way I've set up my life. So I've set up my life so that I work for myself. I'm the, I'm the boss that decides when I go to work, what I'm doing at work, what's going on. And is that an easy life? No, not necessarily. There are days, let me tell you. Um, in fact, I'm sure I've talked about that on here. If not, I will. Um, and frankly, um, many of you are probably also entrepreneurs and get what I'm saying. You know, um, the, some of the blessings of entrepreneurship and self-employment and various things is that we're able to be our own boss. Okay. Some of the drawbacks of entrepreneurship, et cetera, are that we're our own boss. Um, I, I, I wish my, my boss won't let me have snow days anymore. And, and I've talked to her about that, but she just won't budge. She said, get out from under the covers and get yourself to work. You don't, it's not like you have a commute in the snow, wake up, get up and go to work. I don't care if you're cold. And <laughs> obviously being your own boss, you have to have some humor in that as well. Um, but uh, she will let me have sick days. If I really am sick, she'll let me take a nap. So, you know, there's that. But I'd love to hear from anybody else that has uh, stories about spending time with their loved ones, um, either whether you've chosen to spend time with them and, and gotten something out of it, or um, I'm absolutely sure I'm not the only one with this, um, this thought of being, feeling blessed that you can spend time with family members because uh, you have chosen uh, the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Um, and, and what, you know, what, what have you done that maybe, you know, somebody else in the family wasn't able to do, and you were the one that was able to step up because you, uh, you know, your schedule was different or because your lifestyle is different. Um, Frankly, I think I would have felt really, really guilty had I not been able to do it to be there today because I had to go to a nine to five. I would have not only felt guilty, I probably also would have been, you know, frustrated and PO'd that I was at a nine to five still. But um, that's a whole, that's a different topic for a different day. Um, <laughs> talking about uh getting out of the nine to five. If you're, if you're stuck there and the toxicities and various things there, that's totally a topic for another day. Uh, and, and we probably will get into that, especially maybe on a, maybe on a follow, uh, find your formula Friday. Uh, one of the find your formulas Fridays will, will dig into that a little deeper. Um, but I'd love to hear if anybody else in here has any good, um, time with relative stories, uh, that you, you're like, yeah, I was able to do this because I choose, you know, because I'm, I'm either self-employed or did it happen? And it's because you're in a workplace 
that supports that kind of thing. Because I, I really do think that the more progressive workplaces and the more progressive workplace policies that places that people are going to gravitate towards and want to work for in the, the very near future and, and going forward out of this pandemic life that we're in are going to be the companies who flex as much as possible around this very kind of family issue. Um, or, you know, a, another uh, suggestion of a, of a thing like that is, um, you know, when you have work, you need to have work done on your house. And you need to make that during the nine to five day. And will the boss let you flex your time around so you can do that? Um, we've actually got a situation like that coming up on Monday. And, you know, yet again, the ability to do that because of your lifestyle, your, your work lifestyle is, I think, vital because it takes away the stress. Um, it, it, well, it, I mean, it's, it's maybe a different kind of stress because on one level, the, the stress is just having to have the thing done, whatever it is, if you're having like how it worked done on a house or, um, having to, to have something, do something like that. But it's even more stressful if you can't figure out how to be off of work for it or, or if you do take work off of it, work off for it that what the work time you take off, you end up having to use vacation time or sick time that you really need to keep as vacation time and sick time, not get X, Y, Z done on your house time, you know? Um, and, and again, a lot of this speaks to the formula that I have for work-life balance. We absolutely have got to change how we're dealing with these things in our society because they are a large part of the silent killers that are underneath our health problems. And the silent killers are not gonna go away. You know, you can eat the best food you can eat the healthiest food you can eat. You can exercise the healthiest way you can exercise. You can um, do quote unquote, all the things that you're supposed to do. But I guarantee you, if you also do not address all of those silent S's underneath our health problems, if you don't address them all fully, and there's two of them that you can't address fully because you, none of us have full power to address them. Your, your health is going to have issue from it. I, I I'm just flat going to guarantee that. Um, I don't, I don't care who you are. Your health is going to suffer for it. Um, so, you know, you can do the, all of the things right. And your, our health in, in, in general in society and public health professionals look at health from a population standpoint. So I'm speaking from that population standpoint. As a society, our overall health is going to continue to suffer until those things that are underneath our health problems are dealt with. There's just, there's absolutely no two ways about it. And I'm not, I, this this information has nothing to do actually with pandemic. Uh, the pandemic's a separate beast on top of on top of all of this. So um, it's not just that kind of thing that that's causing issue with our collective health um, in society. So. Uh, you know, in order to deal with all of what I call the four silent S's under our health problems, some of it we're going to have to deal with systemically because there are systemic things in our, in our societies that are going to continue to perpetuate negative health outcomes. There's 
just no two ways about that. Um, and if you're in public health, you probably have an idea of uh, what I mean, whether you describe it and couch it the same way I do or not, um, doesn't necessarily matter. Um, although I would definitely love to have a conversation with you about what my, my descriptor is uh, compared to yours. And because that's just always gives us a better understanding overall anyway. Right. So, um, a little bit back to today's topic is spending time with loved ones um, and mindful spending time with loved ones. So today I spent time because a loved one needed a ride somewhere. And the other time I spent, I chose very uh, particularly to take some time away from working to speak on the telephone to another relative who had just gotten their third COVID shot and they weren't feeling good the other day and I wanted to check on them. So, you know, did I have to do that? Was it imperative to, you know, was it uh, the same kind of obligation like taking the other one to the doctor? No. Did I feel like I have to do it, had to do it? Yes. For my own, um, (sighs) For my own ethics of, hey, you need to check on this, this relative needs checked on. I I mean, that's the only way I can really describe it. Uh, Nobody told me I had to, nobody would have, I wouldn't have gotten, there's not, I don't think anyone would have faulted me and said anything about it had I not done it. It was all manufactured in my, the, the whole idea of that phone call was manufactured in my own head. Um, however, it was a very good phone call. I, did I, you know, could I have called, just checked, see how you're doing and then, okay, see you later. I got to get to work. I could have done that too. Um, but I particularly chose not to because in the course of a week, we all only have 168 hours. But the other thing I think the pandemic and, and just life should show us is we don't know how many hours we have with any particular loved one. And we need to, to spend that time with them mindfully uh, because we don't know when we're not going to have it anymore. And so I spent the time specifically, uh, work was still going to, you know, work's still going to be there. I can stay up late tonight if I need to, to work, whatever I need to work. Um, or if I want to deal with my, uh, sleeping patterns, which, uh, I do, I probably will go ahead and get some rest tonight so that I can get up and be even more productive tomorrow. Um, but I totally love, there's 40 people in this room. I would love to see one person at least jump up. There we go. Somebody's Melissa Perkins, global master educator. Actually, I'll just bring you on Melissa and let you tell, let you just, uh, let you introduce yourself. Oh, there's now there was two people waiting. Melissa, thanks for (laughs) jumping up lady. Hey, I think I've seen, I've seen you. At, you've you've come and listened to me a couple times. I I recognize your name. Cool. I just I've just joined the app three days ago, and so I'm still okay. learning my way around and um, just enjoying the vibe. And um, is it so a cool so one? Much. It is a really cool one. It's a really cool one, and I just like your topic. I'm looking for topics that just really speak to my soul and. Yeah, I uh, love this one. Spend time with loved ones. <laughs> good, good, yeah. good, good, good. Well, you know, and and as you heard me talk about, you know, it was like, did I have to do everything I did today with spending the time? No. Uh, you know, nobody would have, you know, I don't think anybody would have given me trouble had I not done, it really even had I not taken the one relative that needed to go to the doctor, to the doctor. But I was, I, the fact that I was like, felt so blessed that I could, it Mm -hmm. had, 
it, it really had, and, and it would have been any, uh, any relative. It didn't matter which one, you know, but this particular one, I still felt, I felt even more blessed because they don't have kids either. And I, I know that I'm personally facing that same future. Right. You know, but I mean, you know, I, I, I've just moved, relocated my company to another city. So I live very far. There's no, no relatives around me at all. Oh I'm yeah. Four hours away, you know, and, um, you know, so I'm not near my immediate family, you know, and, um, so I'm having to make new family, you know, and so luckily for me, I, I share a house. Um, so I, I share a house. I live in the bottom floor of a beautiful home. Um, and my um, housemate is a single mom and we have just become family, you know, so you can make and create oh, that's your awesome. loved one, you know, oh, exactly. and so we were just talking to how we're like sisters now. And, you uh-huh. know, I, I'm really, really appreciative of, the little moments. And I don't think we realize, you know, how eating together, like just sitting down and having meals together, um, what it just does, you know, for your soul. Like, yeah, you are speaking my language straight up. Uh, if you get Indian people together and they're not having a meal, something's up that, that they're not, they're not eating together (laughs) because, because they, they, they should be. Yeah. If you want them to get together, just fix a meal and and tell them that there's a meal That's ready. It. They'll all come together. <laughs> That's it. And I mean, it's the little. I think what what drew me to the conversation is your in your share was just it's the errands. It's the it's the moments of life. I think mm-hmm. we get really bent up about holidays and who's going to be at what holiday and all these different things like that. But it's life is every day. It's running errands together. It's, you know, playing with the kids on the floor and, and, and being a kid again and, and getting dirty yeah. outside and making mud pies and it's making <laughs> memories. And I was telling, you know, I just, I'm sorry, dating a significant other. And I was telling him, he was like, what do you want? What do you want? And I was like, I want moments. I want to create memories with you more than flowers and gifts and trying to impress me. I really am looking for for my for the partner that I want to have this third chapter in my life, I'm really looking for someone who can create memories, and that oh. simple things. It's really just being together and going for a walk and and laughing and just having moments. And so, yeah, I just really appreciate that. This just topic. Sent chills up my that just sent chills up my arm when you were talking about that, uh, and, and it made me actually think of okay, wait, what moments do I have and yeah. And I immediately flashed to uh, this hilarious trip. My husband and I, we were out, we, we couldn't afford much. We had just, you know, we were younger. Not that we can afford much now, frankly, some days, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we just afford things differently. Like when we, but this is like when we were younger. And so we like put what money we had, what money we could in the gas tank. And we drove out in the country and, we were, you know, like kind of just out for a drive to this one and ended up at this one little burger place, you know, had great cheap hamburgers, greasy, you know, whatever. But it was funny because it was raining and we were driving along the river and <laughs> we still refer to this, this, this scenario. These frogs kept hitting the front of the car. <laughs> it was killing the poor, it was, I'm sure we killed more than one frog that night. Um, right. We were trying to murder the frogs. Okay, let me let me be clear here. We weren't <laughs> purposefully trying to kill the frogs. However, we were still to this day referred to it of the as the great frog storm of, and I can't even remember what year it was, but that is it just that's made me think of a moment, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's, but that's it. But that you'll never forget it. And those are the things that bond. Uh, I tell people like the the glue of family, the glue of friendships are the little moments that you just stitch together in time. And, you know, that's what that's what it's about. And I think, you know, the, what I what I do appreciate, even though it's been really hard going through this global pandemic the past few years, I do think that it has reminded everyone, <laughs> whether they want to admit it or not, that, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, what, what really matters are the little moments. Like, you know, like you really start to ask yourself, you know, what matters, you know, and a lot of people are shifting their lives. Um, you know, I work in the realm of education 
Mm -hmm. And I, you know, work every day helping families, you know, um, be able to do more for their families. Like that's what I do. And, and I hear the conversations and a lot of people are just, they're, they're getting out of the mode of work, 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 work. And they're asking themselves, but what, what am I working for? Like, yeah, why am I sending matters. my kids away? Like, I'm sending my kids away. I don't ever see my kids. I went through all this trouble to have kids and I don't even see my kids. And uh -huh. it's really important to, to really ask those questions. Doesn't mean that, you know, working is bad or schools are bad, <clears throat> but it is important to ask yourself, am I really spending the time with the people who matter? Am I really happy? Am I really fulfilled? You know, and mm -hmm. if I'm not fulfilled, what can I do to get those moments back? You know, yeah. and, I, and I was telling, you know, um, you know, my partner, I was like, you know, I said, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't think that it means that I want to be up in your face every single day for hours and hours and hours. I said, I would rather have a concentrated, meaningful few hours with you consistently where we're laughing and loving each other than to have hours and hours of wasted time and space that we're oh, just yes. staring at televisions and looking at devices and not connecting. I want to connect with you. And I think that's just what I wanted to share. I don't want to really talk about Oh my gosh, Melissa, <laughs> you're like, a, I feel like I just made a, a new sister, actually. Aww, uh, okay. To be fair, uh, you know, I've worked in the, I've worked in, um, as a clinical social worker and therapist for 25 years. So worked with children and families. Um, I've worked in the, in, um, you know, they were frequently actually in the K-12 systems, but um, I've taught in graduate school systems myself for the last 10 years. And, um, and, you know, so all of those different pieces and, um, you know, and I come into, I now have having my own business and the things I'm working on are a combination of being a therapist, also having a degree in public health. So I have both. And then being a geek girl and seeing how technology, mental health, and public health have come into this confluence the last however many years, and how I can help people impact, uh, help them with their impact in those three arenas. And that's what I, that's, I, like, I wake up every morning excited about that now. Um, because, you know, and so then to meet someone else who's in education appreciates and is helping other people articulate that we need to spend, we, we need to remember to look at the moments. Yes, we do. It, it just warms it. my heart up. It warms my heart. I mean, you know, Stacey, just, just definitely, I feel the same way. So it's, it's really the work that you do in your field is such a compliment to that of the world of, of educator. Um, we need and work what you guys, people. I'll tell you what, what, what educators <laughs> do overall, believe me, uh, it, props are not even enough for y'all. <laughs> uh, I, I received my flowers. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, <laughs> I, I'm just so excited about the era that we're living in, in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, social and mental health, you know, and, and how people recognize and like, I mean, I, I know you must be just so abuzz and so excited about hearing all the buzzwords in, in our culture now. They, a lot of them have to do with your socialization and your mental health. Uh -huh. and, <clears throat> and it helps you to spend time, you know, like the, yeah. the yeah. thing that a lot of people are, re are recognizing, like for me, I was, um, so I can't quite remember who I was talking to, what we were talking about, but we were talking about how, you know, what, what the new wealth is now isn't so much monetary, isn't so much cash or, uh -huh. credit or all that, but that the real wealth now is time. And I was telling someone that when I created my company, you know, the, the number one thing I realized within the first couple of years is even though my cash flow was, you know, not as high as I had hoped the first, you know, second to sec second, first to second year, what I had in wealth was my time. I never realized how much my time was being pulled away by someone else to be done with what they wanted. And being giving myself the liberation and the freedom to have my time, um, time is wealth. And being able to take that time and put it with the people you love, uh -huh. that's living. That well, is and living. I think I, I really am resonating with that is, is not, and but not just the time, because what else I heard you say, really, I think what's underneath that wealth is freedom and as those two F words, yes. two, two F, freedom and flexibility. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And freedom and flexibility. Yes, I absolutely. think freedom and flexibility are fueling. And, and I didn't mean to make that triple F bomb, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> freedom and flexibility are what's fueling the great resignation. Now, yes. what I see in that is that we, as kind of the educated entrepreneurs who left the toxic world before the pandemic mm -hmm. and crossed that bridge before the pandemic, mm -hmm. you've got to be there for our brothers and sisters who are coming, are getting ready to come over that bridge. Exactly. Over the bridge because uh, it's, it's not an easy one to cross on a good day. And even though, um, they've at least they've had a different catalyst maybe by the pan with the pandemic. Um, I think there's a, there's maybe going to be a struggle there because there's a flood of people coming into that way and all at the same time with the marketplace and the workplace trying to pull them back the other direction. Well, the work, so they need, I think they shift. need extra support. If the workplace is going to have to shift. It's going to well, happen. I think, yeah. you know, some, sometimes you can't, you can't um, have that shift until people en masse really break away. And then to get them back, you have to finally catch up to Facebook and Google. And here in North Carolina, there's a company called SAS that they're known as being very family friendly companies. They're, they're known as being companies that are very um, work friendly, you know, they, they make it feel True. comfortable to go to work. And I think, you know, people need to start to ask themselves companies. I mean, I'm 100% virtual out the gate. So all of my, all of my yeah. staff works from home from day right. one, but you know, they have to start asking themselves, how does this work that I'm asking people to do impact their families and how can we make it so that it doesn't interfere. <clears throat> and my CEO who runs my company for me on my behalf, I'm the owner, but my CEO mm -hmm. who runs my company on my behalf, she has eight children. Eight. Wow. Um, five of them are still at home. She has a set of teen twins and her youngest is four years old and she runs a nonprofit and she's starting a curriculum house and she runs my company full out. How is that possible? Because we are women <laughs> <laughs> and I know she's she she's a cyborg. I swear to God, she's a cyborg. But 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 she but but what we talk about is we we designed this company together, and we made this company so that a woman can be an executive, can be a mother, and she full time homeschools. She full time homeschools. She it's because she's we 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 she is a cyborg. Yeah. Yeah, but but, you, but but it's because we created a company that's possible for her to do it. And uh -huh. it's all about creating, creativity. Yeah. It's all about creating. If you set the intention that your company will be family friendly, it will be family friendly. You have to set the intention. You yeah. have to have the humility to allow it to be. And the the uh, humility, creative. Oh, well, I, I, I think you've got a whole series of shows here, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> on on just those things, the the humility, the creativity, the uh, flexibility, the you know you certainly you we you, you and you set yourself up for the freedom to be able to do it. Um, is there so many things you do? You have to, but but you've got to have the. Uh, I think maybe the open mindedness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go outside of your own comfort zone. Because what's what what's flexibility and freedom for one person may not be for the other, and how do you bridge that gap by being collaborative, by oh, stop certainly. trying to dictate to people what mm -hmm. it is? You know, even though Blue Star is my creation, this is it's, you know, you know, technically my company, I can't have this company by myself. I, it won't uh -huh. succeed. You know, and so in order for me to, you know, allow for my team members to be able to spend time with their loved ones, we had to collaborate. I had to listen. I, it, it can't just be about me. Ironically, I work in a company that serves families, but I am, I'm single. I don't, I, I don't have children of my own and I'm single. Oh, that's actually you know? awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how, I, I mean, I, there's a lot that I, I don't know the day ins and days out of having a four-year-old talking to you and your teenagers on the phone when they're not supposed to be on the phone and mm -hmm. a husband to take care of. And so I have to talk to her. I have to listen 
to her. And I think if more leaders listen to their people, we won't have resignations. We won't have great resignations. I mean, there's going to be shifts and changes just because sometimes it's about alignment. Like this summer, you know, some of my team members who were working with me, we had this shift. We, we couldn't no longer work together because we weren't in alignment. And that's hard. Uh-huh. That's tough. And you got to do what you got to do sometimes. But in general, once you really find a great team that, that is in alignment, that you guys do have chemistry and stuff like that, it's so important that you recognize that their families, their children, their husbands, wives, they're important to them. And they don't want for work to compete with that. It doesn't have to be a competition. You know, right. And, and, and that, you know, as I was reading an article the other day, and I can't remember which company it was, is restructuring. And this was a larger company. This was a nine to five corporation, nine to five style corporation. Um, I want to say it was Dropbox. Don't quote me on that. But that they were changing their work structure to having they had certain hours that people needed to be at certain meetings. So like, let's let's just throw it out there of like, say, Wednesday between nine and 12, you had to be there because mm-hmm. everybody, everybody had to be there for certain things at that time together. But the rest of the week and the other 40 or the other 36 of your hours, quote unquote, whatever you could do in whatever four hour blocks you wanted. Like how would that, just that kind of creativity and difference in like what works for that company but also it's what we're going to be high productivity because we did the same thing at Blue Star, my company. We did the same yep. thing. I let my team members pick and choose when they work. I do not give them, um, you know, hardcore, you know, hours that they must do things. That's my, that can ask me if my CEO, my CEO suggested that we <clears throat> really, um, you know, give us, give a, a suggested range of time that we need, but we really make, people's contracts based on task and service deliverables versus hard time punching mm. in because mm. some people can work at a very, very fast rate and their stuff is done. And what I'm really wanting is their productivity. So I was going to say about productivity. Yeah. At a fast rate or at a, not just fast rate because productivity, some people uh, confuse with being fast. It's, can you get the job done? Well, Exactly. Whatever time frame. So it's focused, um, productive completion, you know, quality mm-hmm. completion. Quality yeah. completion. Quality yeah, it's, it's, it's not productive. Within. I have to go back and do it myself. And, right. You know, and, and when you, you know, I think that the, the lesson for me in all of this is I want to create an environment I would want to work in. You know, uh-huh. and so often I think, you know, as <clears throat> entrepreneurs and leaders, people who own companies and run companies, we we sometimes think about the productivity or the service deliverable, but we have to act, go that one extra step. Would I want to work in my own company? And I did. Like as a startup bootstrap company, every role at one time was done by me. And so mm-hmm. I worked my own company. I worked it, you know, and so I know what it takes, you know, and so I wanted to create an environment that allowed, again, people to spend time with their loved ones, because I want to spend time with my friends, my family, the people who matter to me. And so if we just live by that rule, oh, my gosh, if we just did to others what we would want them to do to us, what an amazing world we would have. I would say, didn't we learn that in kindergarten? You know, the like. We did. Hello. Right. And the the lesson's still within us. We just have to shift. We just have to recognize that, you know, people want to be with their kids. They want to be with their loved ones. They want to be with their husbands. They want to, they want to live because we're here to experience life. And if you just getting up and, you know, I was talking to someone today and they were like, they were really discouraged. They were like, all I do is get up, go to work, go home, go to sleep and watch TV. And they were like, this is, this is not good. And I was like, yeah, I said that there's more, there's a lot of things you're not experiencing. There's a lot of things you're not taking in. Like you go and you make all this money. They're not making the moment that you're talking about. Exactly. And I mean, they're trying to buy material goods. They're like, they they said all their coworkers, they work in manufacturing and, um, and, and high tech manufacturing. And they were like, everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody's working just like this. 
Um, and they were like, um, you know, they're doing it because of Christmas, the holidays. Everybody's getting ready for the holidays. Working for the holidays. And, and I was just thinking to myself, oh, my God, I bet you. Because I told, because this, this is my significant other and he's working these crazy hours. And I was like, I appreciate you wanting to work a lot because you want to impress me with gifts. I said, but I don't actually want that. I want you. We're a new relationship. And what I really want to know is who is the man behind the gift? Who is the man? You want the you want the real gift is what you want. I want the real gift. I want the real I want I want the human being who had the heart to even want to get me a gift. I want to get I want to spend time with you. And for me, the best thing you could do is take me um, and we go for a walk along, you know, or in the mountains somewhere. We go to a botanical garden and have lunch like that is the gift. That's a memory. Well, and, and, and okay, so maybe then you describe what would you give me if you had the moon and stars? What would it look like? Because your description of what you would do is a thousand times better than the monetary material thing that you do. Correct. You know? <laughs> Correct. Oh. Yeah. The time, you know, the you time, know, I, the time. I <laughs> all had been able to have this show today, this way. So I'm going to give a moment back to creator and say thank you, thank you for bringing Melissa to me Aww. today. Because, oh my God. <laughs> it, well, it, that's one thing I love about this platform. Mm-hmm. Is, is that there's these magical moments happening this way. You know, you've shared a moment with me today that is, it, it's a mat. It's a magical moment that way. Is two humans coming together and and you know we we share a lot. You know some of the uh, the same things and the whatever. And it, it's the connection. It's not just the moments, but the connection. I think um, and sharing uh, the energy and frequencies. Um, and I might be getting a little too woo for some people, but I'm just. I you know, want you to be woo woo because this, you cause know. Because cause what you're contributing with this topic, and I'm sure other topics that you do, is you're just giving us little benchmarks, just reminders, you know, hey, mm-hmm. don't forget, don't forget yeah. that, that, that this is what matters. And, I'm, and that's what I love about apps like Wisdom and Clubhouse and, and other apps that are just developing out there. And, you know, they're just, they're just starting to get us to be more conscious. They're helping us to, to really remember and to have the conversations that matter. Like I'm not immersing myself in toxic news feeds <laughs> and toxic news cycles, <laughs> telling me that the world is crumbling and everybody hates each other. I'm not yeah, even I, talking I, about what I, matters. <laughs> 45 or whatever doing that, but yeah. instead got to have <clears throat> this phone. Yeah. And that's, Absolutely. oh my God, that's so much better than any Netflix, anything. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's binge watch love let's binge watch great talks each other and great conversations and, right and, and and techniques and and stories and accounts and ideas and tips like that's really what's been fueling me like you know when i'm sitting here i'm at the computer right now working on of all things invoicing <laughs> so I'm yeah, well, and doing stuff and i'm like oh i'm taking a coffee break on wisdom and i'm gonna go and get infused with positivity and this has been such a beautiful compliment to my work day Oh, I am so, I, I feel blessed to that I was able to bring that to you. I want to thank you so much for it. Um, I connected <laughs> with you on Instagram just a while ago already. Yay! Um, and I, I, I don't know how many followers you have over here, but I already followed you. And I'm going to tell the 60 people in the audience, click on Melissa and follow this Aww, woman. You. Because she has got, <laughs> I can feel the things that you are doing for your company and, and, you know, we all need to like stick together that way. Um, I want to follow you and, and hopefully I can jump up when you do a talk over here. I'm going to do my first one on Saturday. I just, you know, like okay. I said, I just joined Wisdom. Like this is my third day in it. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'm just in love with it. And I've just been listening and learning from masters like you, you know, who are out there just doing a thing. And, you know, I just, I just said for, for the first, you know, week, I'm going to just pay attention and learn um, before I well, do my first talk. I, but um, let me give yeah. you the challenge of sometimes it's also just important to hit that go live button and just do it. That's actually how I ended up on here because literally the week before I found out about wisdom, 
I was, so this is what, three, just over three weeks ago. Right. So I found out about it right. I think it had, it had been out a little bit, whatever. And I challenged myself that I was going to go live Monday through Friday on one of my plat- social platforms. I, the only rule I gave myself was that I had to do it every day, Monday through Friday, and that I had the five different days figured out of what I wanted the main topics to be. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't give myself a rule of how much time, what time it was going to be or anything because I didn't want to, that stressor. Right. And, Girl, I've ended up with like, now I have 16 podcasts episodes in my podcast. Wow. <laughs> I have had the most amazing, you know, some days I'm sitting here talking to myself. Come um, on, talking to yourself. <laughs> and, 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 and other, and, well, the question was, is that I'm answering myself and that kind of gets a little scary. <laughs> uh, but I, but I, I just, I'm like, I'm going to hit live every day and I don't right. even know what I talk about till the day hits. And I've, I've, I've actually kind of fell in love with it where now I'm like, you know, I get five new podcast episodes a week and I got I five. New, a lot of times I get anywhere from three to five new friends that I have talked to online who I get to follow. And then I get to uh, put their link out and help spread the word about the awesome things they do. <laughs> um, That's and amazing. it's like, all at the same time? Yes. <laughs> so brilliant. I followed you. I'd love to, um, if you do me the favor of sending me your email ad, if you sent me a DM on um I will. I'll send you my electronic business card for sure. I'll yeah. Send if I, send you my electronic no. business card. We have got to definitely collaborate. Oh, we, we, we definitely need to talk. The <laughs> other thing, when my podcast goes live, my system will send you a note saying that that podcast is this, that what we've just done today goes, will go live in my podcast. And then you can share that out to anybody you care to share it out to. <laughs> um, I love that. I love I it. Have a, um, I have an app in the app store called technology therapist for anybody in the audience. I would, uh, I, I ask every day, you know, a shameless plug. I'd love anybody want to, you know, download the app, give me a review on the app store, give me, send me, send me feedback about it. Um, I, I want to constantly improve it. Um, and you can access the podcast directly in there as well as message me directly in there or set up a time to meet me. Um, I would, I have a week. I also have a weekly coffee every Wednesday morning with you said South Carolina is where you're at. I'm in North Carolina. I'm in Asheville. Sorry, North Carolina. So for you, it would be 10 a.m. on Wednesday mornings. And um, if you're interested in finding out more about it, it's on my website, stacybrayoka.com slash coffee. And it's a free social hour. And um, we talk about everything in coffee. The only rule in coffee is do no harm. Mm -hmm. But it's an hour of social that there's networking, there's laughing, there's it's just it's different every week and it's kind of one of the fun highlights of my week so if you want to come by and and have a cup of coffee with us uh that would be amazing i'd love to have you there it would be i will i gotta hop on off now but i just really what ah, best 30 minutes ever i'm t- I, I, I was well the baby. same thing, girl i was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I look forward to getting to chat with you some more in the future and probably on a Zoom call so we can even see each other. That'll be brilliant. Have a beautiful yes. evening. And bye, everybody who's listening. She's amazing. Stacey's amazing. <laughs> bye, honey. Well, I'm going to repeat that. Melissa's amazing. Thank you so much, Melissa. You just made my day. And all 61 of you who are in the audience, you guys made my day. I know one other person stepped up at one point. Um, And I'm sorry I didn't get to the other one. I kind of like to, like, once somebody steps in, I like to go deep and uh, do that just deep conversation thing and and create moments like Melissa was talking about. Um, So I apologize if I didn't get to everybody. That's I think that's one thing I like about wisdom is is it's a one-on-one conversation with an audience. Um, But it's also uh, where we can go deep about topics that are human and mean thing, just something that means something. Um, so I really appreciate everybody who has listened. Um, it, it, today's show just really 
hit my heart. If you're listening to this on the replay on my podcast, Technology Therapist, uh, please go check out my app at Technology Therapist on the App Store. Um, you know, give me some likes, shares, all the, you know, things. Give me some feedback also about what you'd like to see on the app and what you'd like to hear from me on Wisdom, because I I love hearing from people and, and finding out what they'd like to know about. Um, I want to bring value to the community, um, and that's literally why I'm here. Um, I want to bring value. I want to collaborate. I want to connect. I want to make moments, all of, all of the things uh, that, uh, like the things that Melissa and I were just talking about. So, uh, if you're here and you hadn't heard some of my other stuff, some of the things I talked about earlier, go back and check out some of my previous episodes here on wisdom or over in the podcast. And you'll probably learn more about me than you ever care to. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and you'll learn about some great guests who have, who have uh, jumped up on here with me. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Everybody stay warm, safe, loved and go spend some time with your loved ones. Have a great evening.